So the other day I made a video where I kind of showed off Windows 11 running on my original Surface Duo. And in that video, and also in a community post, I said, hey, what do you guys want to see me test on this thing in the current stage that it is in? It's important to state before we go too far in this video, this is extremely early days, all right? A lot of stuff just flat out does not work right now. But at any rate, what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at the comments that you guys left, the suggestions, things you wanted to see, and I'm going to do my best to show off as many of them to answer as many questions as I possibly can. But first, I'm going to replicate something that I did in a YouTube short video. I'm going to show you the process of actually booting into Windows 11 because there's a lot of misconceptions kind of about how this works like in general. So let's kind of answer those questions first. So this is the Surface Duo here, and you will see when I open it up and unlock it that I am running Android. And Android is absolutely running totally normally as you would expect it to be running. There's a bit of a story to be told here, which I may tell later of some things that went horribly wrong. And then luckily uh, I was able to get them strained out uh, through a conversation with Gus, the person who's uh, doing this stuff. So shout out to Gus for helping me fix my Android installation. But it was working generally okay before. Now it's working absolutely normal as Android uh, should be working. I'm clicking on things that ran them by accident. So you're in Android. So how do you boot into Windows 11? Keep in mind, once you're in Windows 11, if you reboot, you're going to go back in Android. This is a true dual boot. Okay, you're not losing Android by doing this. But how do you boot now into Windows 11 from here? It's actually, it's really not that complicated. It's not that bad at all. What you have to do is you have to plug your Surface Duo into your computer. Now you'll notice I've got it in FOMO because this screen, the left screen, is the one that's going to be doing stuff. From there, you're going to open up your command prompt. And let's put that down here so that you can see both of these happening at once. Now, if you've gone through this setup process of installing Windows 11 on your Surface Duo, this, what I'm about to do, shouldn't be all that mysterious to you. It should actually be stuff that you're, you're somewhat familiar with, okay? So you're going to learn this stuff through the process. I'm not really going to get into what this stuff means. You're going to type in CD and then the location of your ADB folder where you've got your Android developmental bridge. So I've CD'd in there. Now I'm going to type in ADB reboot boot loader. And I'm going to unlock the, let's unlock the, uh, the duo here so that we are visible in terms of what's about to happen. Let's click enter. Just had to re-enable developer mode because I had forgotten I had to reset my device to fix the things that I uh, sort of alluded to earlier. So let's try that again. ADB reboot bootloader hit enter. The device should now reboot as you are seeing. So now we are on a kind of strange looking screen you probably never seen before. Fast boot, not book, boot UEFI dot IMG and let's hit enter and it should reboot once again and this time it should begin booting into windows 11 and if you look very closely here you'll see that it actually says windows 10 ignore that it's windows 11 i'm gonna hit the power button to select that and we should be on our way you'll see this weird glitched out screen over here in the beginning ignore that it is what it is and there you go there's our start screen let's swipe up type in our pin and there we go now you may notice that unlike in my prior video the taskbar is now available on both screens and that is because i ran windows update and that fixed it you also see that uh, steam just now tried to load up here's something i'm going to try and fix right now the right screen i think should be the default the default screen so let's see if i can fix that you can see here that um, Discord is trying to open, but of course I'm not plugged into the network, so it is going to fail to be able to do that. Let's just minimize that for now. But let's let's try and set this as our default display, our primary display. You see the graphical glitches there? You're gonna see a lot of these. Display settings, make this my main display. There we go. That makes more sense, that's better. Quit Steam, because it can't open, and See if I can close Discord as well. Okay, so there you go. We're looking pretty good now. And you can see that actually carried over to my lock screen now, the uh, screen being switched. So from here, we're in pretty good shape, but there's one really big problem, and that is the lack of networking, okay? This thing is not, no Wi-Fi, no cellular, nothing. None of that stuff is working. So we are totally local only. Now there is one simple solution to this, and it is to use a USB hub, a USB-C hub, that has an ethernet cable. And that is what I'm going to be doing here shortly. But first, we're just gonna kind of talk through some other things. This comment right here from Jamie, is Bluetooth networking an option? 
Not as far as I've been able to find. I've tried it on my Z Fold as well as on my Surface Duo. You can do normally like the hotspot tethering. Of course, that won't help you because you don't have Wi-Fi. But you do have Bluetooth. Bluetooth is actually functional. But I've tried that, paired it to the phone, I've turned it on. Networking that way did not seem to be functional. But let's go back to the uh, community post and we'll go through these questions first. And like I said, I'm just going to read through these and try to answer as many of these as I can. So Daniel here says, an interesting thing about Windows 11 is that it actually treats Duo as two separate displays. Unlike Android that sees one display, I am rebooting for some reason. I'll have to reboot back into this now for some reason. Fun. Uh, but anyways, it treats... This is two screens, not one continuous screen. So he wants to see a comparison of watching spanned content on Windows 11 versus Android, as well as the web browser spanned across both screens. Of course, to be able to do this, I'm going to need an internet connection. So that is where the USB-C plug is going to come in. Unfortunately, this does not charge the device. Charging is not yet supported in Windows 11. If you want to charge this device, you have to boot back into Android to be able to charge it. Let's turn off that ring light so that we can not have horrible glare. And of course, my USB-C is not currently being recognized by uh, Windows 11. So unfortunately, I get to reboot again and hope that this time it actually does recognize that it is plugged in. Okay, after rebooting, I think three times, uh, it is randomly working. Some issues there, <laughs> to say the least. So we've got a video opened up here. We're gonna go ahead and span it and we're gonna go full screen, all right? So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Now let's open up the web browser. Let's go to youtube.com slash scary if literal. Scroll down, lots of graphical glitches there. Let's click on the same video. Now, obviously with Windows, if I scroll up to the top, it will maximize. If I drag it across, that's fine too. There's no real way to just automatically quote unquote span this video across. So you're gonna have to literally drag the window across and boy, that is just that is just awful. Okay, please stop. Let's 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 full screen it. See if you full screen it, it's like no, dummy, you want it on one monitor. So let's <laughs> unfull screen it. And then if you use the theater mode, you can kind of see what's happening. Uh, unlike what you get on Duo, where content is missing on Duo. With Windows 11, the content isn't missing. It's just sort of, there's just, uh, it's, it's ignoring that bit in the middle, which you could argue which one is the better uh, behavior. I don't really know. Let's go to Windows Central on both, and you can kind of see what we're dealing with here. Look at the text there and the text there. Um, the text is not missing on this one. It is missing here. Can I show you this without unplugging things? Look at the text there where it says as fun, as there's a space and then the word fun on Duo 2, which is running Android, it's kind of occluded by the hinge. So that's an interesting one to look at for sure. Uh, Jason here says, what about the Android emulator? That is not currently functioning. You go to the store and that does not work. Uh, Jose Silva says, or Jose Silva maybe, says YouTube, I've just shown YouTube, it works fine, it actually plays relatively well, although no audio. You can, though, pair a set of headphones to it, and it does work then. So maybe a speaker or something, and then you would have audio. Uh, a lot of people ask to try some games. Games crash. The GPU driver just is not there yet. He's having to modify a driver that is already somewhat in existence because the HCX, that is uh, what Microsoft uses for Windows 11 ARM stuff with, like, the Surface Pro X, uh, that's basically a Snapdragon 855, but he's still having to modify that driver. It's not there yet, and the game is just crashed, so gaming is not a thing. I, I tried. I, you saw that I installed Steam. It just doesn't work. Drew asked to see the pin working. I actually did do it in this video, but I can do it again here if you guys would like to see that. So currently, the Surface pin does work, but only on the left screen. Nothing here. Yes, here. And you can actually see that... <laughs> The little uh, cursor actually does show up as well. Now, one thing that Gus actually pointed out to me is that the calibration is off. You can see how it's, it's, it's way off to the side. That's not just the pin. That's actually in touch as well. The calibration just is a little bit wonky. Hopefully, that's something that he's able to continue uh, working on. I'm sure, that, I'm sure that's something he can probably 
uh, get figured out. Darren here asked if this, if the goal of this project is to make it something that people can use or if it's just a proof of concept. I think Gus might be surprised from what I've uh, gathered from him that things have made it as far as they have. But I do think that he seems pretty committed. I, I don't want to speak for him, but um, I don't think he's stopping anytime soon. So we'll have to wait and see how far he's able to get with this. Roger says, what about the display settings? And we kind of did look at that, but we can we can take a bit of a, a deeper look here. So let's maximize edge so that it's only on one screen. Let's long press and go into, come on. Oh my goodness. Go into display settings. Those The flashing stuff is just horrible. And if you can make this out, you probably kind of can't because it's kind of hard to read. Sometimes if it's in a window, like you can see it a bit better. Um, you can change what display is which, you can change what screen is where so that, you know, the device will think that, like, the right screen is above the left screen. You can kind of confuse it like that. You can manually go in and rotate each screen, but you have to do one screen at a time. So you can have one screen rotated to landscape and the other one portrait, but you can kind of mess with that. Change the scale, the resolution. Um, kind of hard to see what's going on there, but that's that's basically what that looks like. Plugging it into external speakers. If you had a hub that had like a speaker port in it, perhaps that would work. I don't have a way to test that. So I got some other people that just wanted to see particular apps and how they work. So let's close out of the web browser and let's go to one of the ones I saw asked about, which is Discord. I'm using a, a wireless mouse and keyboard, which is hooked up to um, that hub, by the way, in case you're wondering what's going on here. And while we're loading into that, we'll go ahead and open up Spotify as well, which, is apparently taking me to the store, which that's fine because someone else wanted to see how the store worked. Hard to see what's going on on that screen. So we're signed into Discord. You can see it is it is having a hard time. And if you maximize it, things kind of get really weird where you, you can't really see what's going on. And you can't, even if it does straighten out everything's just formatted in such a way that you, it's just not meant for a screen this size now you could change the rotation of this and it would be a little bit better but then you'd be holding your duo this way around and that'd be a little bit weird spotify keeps trying to download but i'm not sure if it's actually going to work you can see that i mean look this is the store the store is accessible but it has a really hard time with just existing spotify says it's it's installed let's try to launch it We'll put Spotify up there. You see how it's over, it's actually overlapped. And then you could put, uh, can I put Discord? What happens if I do this? Will it? <laughs> so the snap windows, the snap layout is just really wonky. It doesn't really know what to do because it's just the screen size and everything. It's just super, super strange. But uh, yeah, that's a pizza right there in case you're wondering what that was. There you go. I think that's pretty much all the questions I can answer at this point. You can see that while there's obviously a lot of progress that's been made, there's also obviously a lot of progress that needs to continue to be made. And I think that Gus is going to continue making that progress. But for now, that's pretty much where we're at. Um, not something I would recommend anybody going and installing right now. This is really just a proof of concept at the moment. The fact that it works at all is absolutely incredible. But if you're thinking about, oh, I'll install this and work on it. No, you're, you're not. You're not going to get any work done on this at all. You can be way better off on Android. But as new things happen, as updates come out, as he does improve things, I will, of course, bring those updates to you. Guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on the way out. I'll see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.